In this segment, I'm covering Sustainable Development Goal number 11, Sustainable Cities and Communities. This is the United Nations Global Goal that is being used to justify the global surveillance system by selling the idea that the only way to save the planet is by having a huge chunk of the world's population living in cities. Existing cities must be upgraded to smart cities and many, many more cities must be built from the ground up as smart cities. They say that these cities are sustainable, yet that couldn't be further from the truth. SDG 11, Sustainable Cities and Communities. They say that SDG 11 is about making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. They go on to say that the world's population is constantly increasing. To accommodate everyone, we need to build modern, sustainable cities. For all of us to survive and prosper, we need new intelligent urban planning that creates safe, affordable and resilient cities with green and culturally inspiring living conditions. Firstly, how can a city ever be sustainable? How can those words even sit side by side when they contradict each other? Another oxymoron is green cities. Living in dense stack and pack cities is actually less efficient and unsustainable because when you have to bring in resources from outside of the city, it means that the city is reliant on other lands to function. It is physically impossible for a city or people living in large enough numbers that require importation of resources to ever be sustainable, let alone lessen the impact on the environment. Where does the city get food and water? Where does the energy come from? What about cement, glass, wood, steel, solar panels? Where does the waste go? Where does the silicon come from that makes the solar panels? Where does the copper come from for all of the technology that runs the smart city? Where does lithium or nickel come from? What about plastic, uh, asphalt, and every last consumer good? I could go on and on and on. The reality is that natural resources and rare minerals, along with other resources such as food and water for cities, come from lands that cities are dependent on. And so-called smart, green, and sustainable cities, as they grow in numbers, so will the lands that need to be denuded to build and maintain them. Yet the United Nations the World Economic Forum, the Club of Rome, and all of the corporate players invested in running the world, they pretend to care about the environment and they tell concerned people exactly what they want to hear whilst they financialize nature and build a global surveillance system. Their agenda does not solve pollution and depletion of natural resources, but instead it actually makes it worse. The sacrifices we are going to be expected to make in the name of the greater good is to move away from nature off the land and away from wide open spaces where we'll be more disconnected from nature and at the mercy of a technological and economic system that further dehumanizes us. Living in smart cities means that we'll no longer have the choice to live amongst nature, to live in natural surroundings. We'll be cut off from daily direct contact with nature and we won't be able to interact with the earth the way humans are supposed to because we will be living in artificial environments that are highly toxic with minimal sunlight and consuming synthetic foods. There will be too many people living in too small of an area full of a multitude of surveillance technology that not only monitors and manages us, but technologies that we will be reliant on to access the essentials. And so-called sustainable cities are being built in deserts, in dust bowls, which once again is not sustainable. It is simply not supported by evidence. Yet the illusion of the green, clean city is being sold to us, so we accept the reduction in living standards, along with all of the cameras, a digital twin, also known as a digital identity, sensors and concentrated power in the hands of a few. To quote a genuine environmentalist, Paul Kings North, what does it mean to save the planet, to save humanity? Even if creating this kind of technotopia would save the planet, I don't want to live in it because it looks like a prison to me. And they're using clever perception management and marketing, public relation campaigns and corporately funded environmentalist groups who have members who have no idea how hoodwinked they are. This quote by Derek Jensen sums it up really well. 
you will have hundreds of thousands of people marching in the streets of Washington or New York or Paris. And if you ask those individuals, why are you marching? They will say, we want to save the planet. And if you ask them for their demands, they will say, we want subsidies for the solar and wind industry. That's extraordinary. I can't think of any time in history when a mass movement has been so completely captured and turned into lobbyists for an industry. And of course, they're using celebrities to promote these green illusions too. People who are very accustomed to reading a script and playing a role. I wonder if, if any of them realize what they are even talking about. If one was to question these solutions or even take a look at the Mining and Metals World Economic Forum intelligence map, they would find that it is actually a blatant lie because it is more industry, more extraction, more denuding of the earth and more mass production and an expansion of corporate interests. Whether it is to make solar panels, windmills, electric vehicles, they are still mining the planet. There are no plans to stop mining. In fact, it is expanding. And now they want to mine the deep sea to provide the materials necessary for the proliferation of so-called green technology. The ocean and its inhabitants are becoming the next sacrifice zone in the name of green technology. There is no loyalty to the planet. Exploitation will continue. Industrialized deforestation will continue. Taking land for resources from people will continue. Land theft in the name of preservation and mining resources will continue. And the same entities who have been polluting our planet whilst they continue to gobble up all of our resources and our lands are the very same that are behind these so-called solutions. They are just wearing a different hat. Although it is no secret that ExxonMobil, Big Ag, Big Timber and Big Oil are behind biofuel. Biofuel is where they are taking the living planet such as plants and trees, and turning them into fuel for power plants. And it's also no secret that all of those pushing it are funded by giant foundations who are invested in green technologies and the resource-based economy. Farms and forests are being destroyed for green battery factories. Drilling for oil is not stopping. A city just can't run on solar and wind, and they are doing a really good job diverting most people's attention from this reality. We are facing a future where we are being further and further dehumanized, where there will be even more concentrated power in the hands of a few. What they are trying to accomplish is to take control of every element of civilization under the guise of sustainability. And they are hoping that by the time the general public catch up with the fact that green technology is unsustainable, the smart city infrastructure will be built and it won't matter what energy source it is ran on. It will be too late. They don't care that eventually it will be shown to be ineffective or unsustainable. They just care that you believe it long enough to get the technological infrastructure in and everyone dependent on it. Because once it's complete, there will be no way out. 